Now, of course, the next match on court will be mixed doubles. Following that, we'll have men's singles, and then women's doubles and men's doubles will be our last match in this afternoon session. As you can see, just two show courts here for the Super Series finals. Two sessions a day. Public address announces our next match on to court. Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Peterson of Denmark. There they are. Up against the pair from Thailand. Sukit Prakamol and Sarali from Tonkam. Veteran Thai pair. Oh, well, in fact, Christina Peterson is the only player on court, not in their 30s. 25 years of age to be precise Christina Peterson she's going to be a busy lady this week because she's also in the women's doubles she's playing women's doubles with the tall left-hander Camilla Aruta Yule so the Thailand pair number six in the world rankings and number six on the super series rankings played 10 of the 12 Super Series events this year. Missed the China Masters and Hong Kong. Missed the Hong Kong because they were busy at the Southeast Asian Games. Southeast Asian Games, where they won a silver medal in the mixed doubles, losing out to Tantoi Ahmad and Liliana Natsia of Indonesia in that final in Jakarta. So the tall left-hander, Joachim Fischer-Nielsen, 33 years of age. His partner from Orborg in Denmark, 25. She's a tall lady, 178, that's about 5 foot 10. Super Series ranking of two for the Danes. Missed just one Super Series event this year. That was India Super Series. First year that India has had a Super Series event. So of course, this Danish combination two years ago were winners of the Super Series finals. There's confirmation of their world ranking. I can tell you they are the number two seeds by virtue of the fact that they were number two on the Super Series ranking at the end of the year. 43 and 11 translates into six finals this year, including three titles. But they really have been on the most remarkable run five consecutive finals in five tournaments played the last five the Danes so we know they're in good form of course they won two Super Series events back to back the Danish Open incidentally winning the Danish Open for the third time and then a week later winning the French Open so there's Sara Lee Sung Tongkam 32 years of age and Sukit Praprakamol was an interesting player to watch, Sukit. Never quite know what you're going to get with Sukit, do you, Ian? Well, I think that's the interesting uh, part of this <laughs> match, really. I mean, on his day, and he's proved it many times over the years, he can compete with anybody in the world and, and beat anybody in the world. Um, but this year they've been so up and down this Thailand pair it's been incredible yeah you just don't know what to expect so uh, that's the first thing to look out for I think in this match 
Yeah, because of course, Sukit Praprakamol and Sarali Tonka met the 2010 Super Series finals, reached the final, lost out to the now world champions, Zhang Nan and Zhao Yunlei. And of course, they also reached the final of the All England Championships as well. So. That's quite stunning, actually. Yeah. I remember the Danes, of course, playing against the other top Thailand pair on many occasions. Sompon Nanu Kreteawan and Kunchela Borovici Chaikul. Oh, that's nice reading of the game from Sara Lee. Again, there's Sara Lee. That you said it, Jill. She's a great. She is a great reader of the game. When when Sudket's providing some some speed and pace around the rear court, she's a very very tricky player to play against. The problem for her this year has been that uh, the form from behind has been a little bit inconsistent. Yeah. Just missed it. So look, it was a nice little set play, the cross smash from Sudket and Sara Lee lining up on the straight. Just missed it. Sudke, you'd have to say his partner had nowhere to go there. She was always going to take the full brunt of that, I'm afraid. Uh, it's just a lovely little block there from Sara Lee. And in fact, between these two pairs, they have three bronze medals from World Championships in mixed doubles. A pair from Thailand, twice bronze medalists, 2005 and 2006. Yeah, 2006, a match point to go to the final as well. That's right, against Nathan Robertson and Gail Ames. I think you were coaching that one, I remember it you? well. <laughs> the Thailand player were seeded in this year's World Championships, number three seeds, and they lost in the first round. Yeah, it's been a bit scrappy so far. Has that been harsh or is no, that fair? No, I think that's fair. No real tactics evolving so far. 
Possibly because they haven't, they don't know each other's styles. Whilst they will have seen each other play many times before, yeah. when, when you get onto court against a, a pair you've never played before, it's always sometimes just takes a little while to settle into it. Yeah, it's amazing. They'll both feel as though they know each other's games really well, but they've, they've never actually been out there. I have to say, so far, Supket's been very happy to sort of lift the shuttle from mid-court, and that means his partner's working away into the net and then having to retreat away from the net, and she's getting caught on defence all the time, having to come away from the net, retreating. And that's, that's not a good sign. When Sudket's playing well, he takes the shuttle early on the mid-court and has a really good touch with blocks and little touches into space. He's not showing that so far. And there's that favourite tactic of theirs, quite classic. It's opportunity to smash comes up, he hits cross, and his partner's ready on the straight interception. Very quick back to that flick serve is York and Fisher. Yeah, prides himself on being difficult to serve to. Likes to attack the short serve, but as you say, he's very agile to get behind the flicks as well. Where did that come from? And that's what he can do. Yeah. You know, several times he's had it much easier shots than that, and he's just lifted. And here he's in all sorts of trouble and finds the perfect cross block. Extraordinary shot. Yeah, good defense from Christina there. Although she's backing off the net, she had kept a racket in front of it. Was able to react to the shuttle, just deviate the shuttle across. And it means that she and her partner, York and Fisher, have the advantage at the mid-game interval. Three-point advantage, to be precise. Mm. Well, on the Thailand pair have been as high as two this year in the world rankings. In fact, they've spent a total of 23 weeks at number two in the world rankings. Which makes it even more extraordinary, the fact that they can lose four first-round tournaments, first-round matches in tournaments this year. Yep. Difficulty. Well, the back shot. Yeah, problem stemmed from earlier in the rally again, just giving the lift away a little bit too easily. They need to compete for the net in the midcourt situations. Can't afford to be lifting against this Danish pair. They're too well organised in attack.
just putting enough pace on the shuttle to make it very awkward for Sara Lee. Forcing her into error. There's a little push from Christina Peterson. Angle. Just taking a little bit of pace off the attack there and hitting space rather than trying to hit onto the body. Nice drop there and then the change of direction and change of pace. Yeah, it's a yeah. lovely angle. Pedersen just a little bit flat footed there in defence. Ambitious. Captain in the Air Forces, Sara Lee. Oh, yes, clever play. Forcing Peterson to the back of the court, then bringing her forward. Yeah, and I think that if there is a still a weakness in Pedersen's game, it is mobility and agility. When you hit two and now, she's improved her racket work a lot, particularly in defense. But when you can keep her moving, there are still some question marks, I think. Well, this has run a four straight points, and it really has the Thailand pair back into serious contention in this opening game. Yeah, so okay, just to me just seems as though he's lost a little bit of penetration with his attacking play. Interesting that Camilla Rutiul sitting on the coach's bench because, of course, on the adjoining court is another Danish player, Peter Gader. Incidentally, it's Peter Gader's birthday today. Yeah, well, Camilla, she knows a little bit about mixed. Mm, former world champion two years ago in Hyderabad. But her partner's been struggling a lot with injuries of late and therefore they haven't qualified. Yeah, just signs in the last couple of tournaments that they're coming back into form. Yeah. Which is nice to see. Again, no real penetration from Sudka in attack. That makes it difficult for his partner to get into Good position on the forecourt. Yeah, there's the drift coming into play. We saw that extensively in the women's singles. And presumably these mixed doubles players won't have been watching that women's singles at all. They'll have been out of the arena floor. They will have been warming up, stretching. Yeah, I think they'll have got the word from the coaches. Coaches will have been watching the conditions for them. Just giving them a heads up as to what's happening out in the arena. But it'll always take you one or two, uh, one or two points to pick up on that. Get the sensation. Yeah, and just get to understand what a significant drift it is. Oh, my goodness, that sat on the top of the net. Had a little look, decided in the end it didn't want to go over. Yeah, but again, it's it's not a great shot. Cross drive, 
Christina will see here was in perfect position to take it even if it come over. It's high on the court, crouch defense. Yeah, and there's just been the odd little burst from the Thailand pair, but just struggling to match the Danish intensity at the moment. Too inconsistent. Well, there are the world champions in the mixed doubles. Carefully watching this, along with two of their coaches. Oh, that's clever play from Christina Peterson. And the Danes have earned themselves six game points. Again, off balance and playing across court, though. Asking for trouble, I'm afraid. Opened up his own court. time they convert the second opportunity and the number two seeds Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Peterson 21 15 confirms the umpire 15 minutes of play Confirmation of the score in the opening game, 21-15. Yeah, first game, although the Danes not, not playing to the level we've seen them over the last few weeks, they've managed to keep the intensity quite high, made too many errors, whereas the tie and pair has been the odd flash of brilliance, but too many mistakes, too many poor choice of shot. The Danes have done more than enough to win that first game. Yeah, and I think the talk will all be about that there is a lot of space. They can take the attack quite comfortably. Don't have to force the plate. Thailand pair at the moment happy to give the attack. Joachim hitting his usual good angles from the rear court. Doesn't have to force too much at the moment. Just needs to play a nice solid game. A little more urgency in that rally from the Thailand pair. Well, they certainly need it, but they need to play with that intensity all the way through the set to have a chance here. There were too many lulls in that first game where they made give the list, lift away a little bit too easily and just relaxed. And there we see it again. I have to be honest, though, Ian. I'm not sure I've ever seen the Thailand pair play with the sort of intensity that we often see from this Danish pair throughout the entirety of a match, and that somehow is just their style it is but the problem Sudket seems to have lost a little bit of penetration with his attack and just a little bit of speed and so that inability to keep his concentration is, is hurting them a lot more now yes you see they're just not getting into position there yeah and also, his body language often to me is, <laughs> well, I don't really know how to describe it. I mean, sometimes he looks as if he hasn't a care in the world, but you, you, you know he does care. I've spoken to him about it. He desperately cares, but he just doesn't look as if he does when he's on court.
Oh, the luck of the net cord with the Danes. Yeah, but again, Sub kept guilty of hitting on to the Danish girl there. Christina taking one step off on cross, waiting for this cross drive. And there it was. Beautifully placed, beautifully read. Yeah, you create your own luck. Oh, that's a clever placement of the smash. It does tend to be a little bit committed, doesn't she, Christina Peterson, when she's defending? She does, and it's interesting that it's Sara Lee that a couple of times has yeah. got through, whereas Sudkets tried to hit hard onto the defence, tried to use power. Uh, Sara Lee's little sort of placement smashes have been more effective. Clever. Again, Sudkett guilty of hitting onto the defence. Good rally. Oh! Well, this time, the shuttle sat on the top of the net and fell back. The Thailand side. Yeah, Sudkett there had two or three chances, though, didn't he? We've got Christina Pedersen on the straight. Just hit out of her defensive zone. Yeah. Pushed it wide. Some pull. He was a fine men's singles player, wasn't he? He was. He was a tough competitor. Yeah. Well, they managed to turn the rally around. Got a hit in the ear, I think, there. Christina Peterson. Sukit quick to apologize but yeah. you know the start of the rally Ian serving to Sukit Sukit lets the shuttle drop and lifts it in in mixed doubles you have to really assume that the man is going to put pressure on the low serve and really try and attack from the onset of the rally yeah it means that Sara Lee just doesn't get into an, uh, an aggressive position and where she's so good is reading the game on that front court but if Sukit's not putting the pressure on she doesn't get into those positions. Good women's doubles player too, didn't Sara Lee? Just concentrating for the last few years on her mixed doubles. Just overdone it, taken with the drift. Yeah, again this year she's occasionally played ladies doubles and she still looks very good at ladies doubles. Yeah. In the team event in the Southeast Asia Games, in the ladies' team event, she played doubles very effectively. Picked up a couple of important points for them. Yeah. Error on the return of serve. Sorrily in the rear court, providing good variety, mixing the attack up, creating a chance for a partner in the front court.
Yeah, that was a prime example of Christina Peterson getting tangled up on her defence. Yeah, desperate to take it on the backhand side there. Being forced further and further wide to get into the backhand stance. forehand side realised that Sarli was pushing up the court in defence and just hit angle rather than pace quick thinking again it's the lift return of serve can't do that in mixed doubles at this level no and even after the, the lift return of serve he seemed to back so far into court and yeah. look at the casual defence yeah very passive well I'm sure the Danes Will take full advantage of that. Certainly with their four point advantage at the mid game interval, having taken the first. Did you get any of that, Ian? Couldn't, couldn't hear too much. They were talking a lot about uh, Sudke rather than Sara Lee there. Mm. And we're looking to keep the pressure on him. He doesn't look in the mood today so far. Shuttle above the above net height in the midcourt. Can't afford to be missing that. You know, I think what's what's more disappointing for me as a spectator watching him is his body language after he makes an error. It's it's you know and as I said earlier on, I've I've spoken to him about it and he said, Jill, this is just the way I am. It's of course I care, of course it bothers me when I make an error, but it just doesn't appear to us that it does. That's clever, clear. Yeah, yeah, very, very often with younger players, you, you find this type of thing where when things are going badly, you take on, they take on this sort of nonchalant attitude where they want to make out they don't care. Yeah. When really it's just hiding the fact they do care. Yes. Um, but I have to say it's quite unusual with experienced players to see that. Mm. Seven. Yeah, you can't afford to lift short this man. Joachim Fisher, very efficient with his angled smashes. I think Sudkett's got a point here. I mean, Christina kept him waiting a long time with that serve. He's got every right to put his hand up if he feels he's going off balance after that period of time. That was a bit harsh to get a talk into there. But he's really not been able to deal with uh, Christina Pedersen's service at all. Again, it's not a great return of serve. Didn't commit to being aggressive. No leg drive to take the shuttle early. Oh. 
Well, the smash was too flat and too long, but I have to say it was the right idea. Once again, trying to aim for the right shoulder of Christina Peterson. Good judgment, lets it drop wide. Well, this is a run of eight straight points. For a ten point advantage. Clever serve. Surely too little, too late from the Thailand pair. Yeah, on the evidence of the match so far, they're going to make one or two mistakes yet in this match. Yeah, that's not a great serve. Yeah, but very well dealt with. Good angle, yeah, got behind it. Or rather, didn't quite get behind it, but used the hand very well to bring the shuttle down steeply. Yeah. Three points from victory. Well, number threes. Oh. Well, there was a defensive shot there from Joachim Fischer. Absolutely superb. Yeah, took it out from behind himself. Yeah, sadly, we're not going to see it, but absolutely extraordinary racket head control. Say why now, Sudket? That's the two most aggressive points he's played in the match. Sorely able to take the attack, and he steps forward onto that. Doesn't let the shuttle come to him as he's been doing so often in this game. Makes all the difference. Takes it early, beats the defence. Brilliantly taken from Sara Lee. And again, Sukhtep plays the block this time rather than lifting cross. That allows his partner to move forward. And she obliges beautifully at the net. Yeah, because she is a terrific front court player. She's a great net player. Reads the game well. Technically very sound. Five straight points. Surely they couldn't come back. Well, you never know. You don't. You'd have to say there's going to be a mistake some stage, though, the way this match has gone. Oh, 
Oh, the mistake is from the Danish racket. Very expressive on court is York and Fisher. Oh, finds the line. Goodness me. Well, there's only two points in it now. A run of seven straight points. That's a great smash. Yeah, superb. Absolutely on the line. Good serve. Well, well, well. Oh, yeah, this will make the Danes a little bit nervous, this run of eight straight points by their opponents. Oh, my goodness. Well... Dane's just asking for a moment to towel down. Slightly surprised the umpire allowing that. Crucial point. Well, she's served very well in this match so far. <laughs> and a yell of delight from York and Fisher. Again, didn't try to hit hard, just made sure she brought the shuttle down. Got it underneath the racket of Sara Lee there. Three match points. First time of asking. 21-15, 21-17. And the Danes doing enough. But my goodness, if the pair from Thailand had played like that from the onset of the match, we could have had a thriller there, instead of which, until the very end, when the Thailand pair appeared to be catching back up, it was all a little one-sided. Uh, confirmation of the score, 21-15, 21-17.